well, what a whirlwind uh, 24 hours it's been for me. Just landed back from uh, America um, this morning back into the UK, decided to spend a couple extra days out there in the US uh, after the summer series. In fact, I went to Washington for the final matches between uh, Chelsea, Fulham, Brentford and Villa, I think it was. Yeah, of course, Newcastle and Brighton uh, headed back to the UK. Um, on the Friday, so I went to Washington for a couple of days and then decided, look, why not be over there uh, and not get to see New York properly? So I stayed out there for an extra couple of days, flew back in this morning, Thursday morning, and as you can see, here I am uh, at Tyneside Cinema uh, in the city centre of Newcastle ahead of tonight's, uh, I was going to say red carpet, but as you can see behind me, blue carpet premiere of the Newcastle United Amazon uh, documentary, which uh, you can see there. We are Newcastle United. So, uh, had a couple hours sleep this afternoon. I'm feeling very jet lagged. I've just done a range uh, of interviews with uh, a few of the Newcastle United players, um, including Callum Wilson, Kieran Trippier, and uh, the manager Eddie Howe, and also managed to speak to Amanda Staveley and Merdad Guduzzi as well uh, about their roles in the documentary, having cameras following them about uh, for the best part of uh, six months and I think it's fair to say that they're all very excited about what we're about to see tonight. So we're going to get a chance to go in tonight, uh, see two of the episodes, I believe it's the first two episodes um, that will hit your screens in uh, just under two weeks time I believe. So great chance to see that. I think we're not allowed to say much of what's going on because we're not allowed to um, give the, the game away shall we speak so I'll say what I can say afterwards uh, and you'll see some of the interviews with the, the players and, and the owners and the manager Eddie Howe on Sky Sports News uh, this evening uh, and into Friday as well but really amazing to be here tonight and just see um, see this place you know just to see Newcastle here at this Tyneside Cinema I was here about five years ago for a very similar premiere of a Paul Gascoigne uh, film documentary that, that went out but this is one of my favourite parts of the city this really love Tyneside Cinema here and it's amazing to see that Newcastle are going to be shown in the in the bright light so members of the first team squad are here I saw Bruno Guimaraes is inside the likes of Nick Pope and John Longstaff here as well Look, really looking forward to see what we're going to uh, see tonight and I will report back afterwards with what I can say and then also we need to talk about transfers as well uh, Tino Livramento uh, a fee agreed today between Newcastle and Southampton for his signature uh, more details on that after I've been inside. Oh, again, like I said before, you're going to learn so much about the players and the kinds of art, even I don't know what's on that. Everything on the film, uh, it's a bit heart wrenching, um, and I think it was quite daunting initially that, to take the decision to do this. You know, hats off to the players. Every team talk we do, the delivery is different. Sometimes I don't actually do a team talk, and actually I, I tend to do it during the week. So on this occasion, I think. sort of thought-provoking behind the scenes uh, access to the club but also as plenty of uh, humour and fun along the way as well and there were certainly plenty of moments throughout where the, the crowd who were inside Tyneside Cinema with their uh, their popcorn and their, their, their bottle of beer there were plenty of moments where they uh, they were roaring with laughter at some of the, the scenes in there. We're not allowed to give any of the details away which is a shame because I'd love to have told one of the one or two of the stories uh, to you just now. So sadly, you're going to have to wait a, a couple of weeks until the documentary uh, is out. But that's two of the four episodes that we saw inside. And I have to say, everyone who was lucky enough to get a ticket tonight to be in there and uh, and watch proceedings uh, thor thoroughly uh, enjoyed that. Um, but as I say, we're counting down until the, the season begins. And what I did miss today while I was catching a couple hours sleep at home, having uh, returned from New York at lunchtime, was the fee agreed story for Valentino Livramento, or Tino, 
as uh, you will all get to know him by. Interestingly, I spotted a Newcastle fan at tonight's event with Tino 11 on the back of his shirt. The, the first Tino to play for Newcastle since Tino Aspria should Newcastle get the deal done. And it's important to point out the deal is not done yet. But one of my colleagues at Sky Sports, Lyle Thomas, uh, broke the story earlier on that a fee had been agreed for Livermento to join Newcastle United. We know this has been a protracted one. We know it's been going on for some time. But finally, that deal was struck today for what we understand to be £32 million in a deal that could reach towards £48 million. So a lot of money Newcastle spending on a, on a player who... He's, he's not started a game for over a year. Um, he's only 20 years old and hasn't had that much Premier League um, experience under his belt. But listen, Eddie Howe hasn't put a foot wrong in the transfer market so far. And you suggest that should be another one of those if he gets his methods into Tino Livramento as quick as possible. Yes, he had the ACL injury last season. He missed pretty much all of the season. He played the last couple of games as a, as a substitute. Um, but obviously Eddie Howe and his recruitment staff have seen something in him that he could add to the squad here and give real competition in the full-back areas. I think he'll initially be seen as a number two for Kieran Trippier at right-back, but I think also he could play at right-back and allow Trippier to play left-back as well, so it means Newcastle will have Trippier, Burn and Target at left-back with Livramento at right-back. And remember, you've still got Emil Kraft and Javi Manquillo at the club at this moment. So plenty of options now in full-back. I would be very surprised if the club went out and spent money on another left-back on top of Livramento. It's a big outlay on a player like that. And obviously a lot of question marks uh, were, were raised, a lot of eyebrows were raised, should I say, when Alan St Maxim was sold a couple of weeks ago. But this transfer would not have been able to happen if it were not for the club trading St Maxim. And so with St Maxim going, both Barnes and Livramento have been able to uh, be signed due to the rules surrounding uh, surrounding financial fair play and amortisation um, and they've got those two players in I would suggest they're still looking for one more probably a centre back to come in and compete with Fabian Shah who obviously has that small injury at the moment but anyway move on to the weekend we've got the Seller Cup we'll hear from Eddie Howe tomorrow at his uh, pre-match news conference um, and for me it's just a chance to go and get some sleep now absolutely knackered from a time in America thoroughly enjoyed it though thoroughly enjoyed tonight having a look at what the guys have been doing in the Amazon documentary um, and it was really good to hear from uh, Eddie Howe, Callum Wilson and Dan Byrne at the end as well who all got on stage and had a little chat about the last year or so at the club and just looking ahead to the, the new season so all will be revealed in the coming weeks but a really good insight for those lucky supporters who had a chance to spend the evening with some of the Newcastle United squad the manager and the owners here at Tyneside Cinema this evening <laughs>